And the lessons of the Holocaust still so relevant today. Thankfully, there are still a number of survivors able to share their stories with younger generations. We were privileged to be invited to a recent class, and we should mention that some of what you're about to see may be inappropriate for younger viewers. Absolutely. Stacy Nowak teaches seventh graders at Weston's Temple Door Dream about the Holocaust. Yes, six million were murdered. Stacy's family was spared from the Holocaust atrocities, but teaching about it has become a calling. I just felt like it's something I had to do because what does happen when the Holocaust survivors are no longer here to tell their story? Somebody does have to do it. She shows her students a short film about children of the Holocaust, kids about the same age as those in the classroom. But in the corner sits a special guest, an elderly man who doesn't need to watch a movie. He lived it. What you have seen here, I went through. Julius Eisenstein lives in Hallandale Beach. He's one of almost 12,000 Holocaust survivors who now live in Florida. He was almost 20 when the Nazis invaded his native Poland. He begins. My father had a bakery and a grocery store. And one day a German came in with a sheet of paper and said to my father, get out of here. We had to leave the business. We only had whatever we had on ourselves wearing. That's what we were left with. He, his parents, three sisters, and all their Jewish friends and neighbors were imprisoned at first in cramped, walled-in villages known as the Jewish ghettos. I am walking, and as I walk a little further, I am grabbed by a German Nazi by the neck, and I am pulled out of the line. Now, this is the last time that I have seen my family. From the ghettos, they were put on trains, carted off like animals to concentration camps all over Eastern Europe. The seventh graders could not have been prepared for what came next in Julius's story. When I came into Auschwitz, they chased me out of the train. All I knew is I smelled this bad smell of dead bodies. And when I looked up in Auschwitz, there were four huge chimneys. And on top of them, fire came out, no smoke, fire from the people what they were burning. That was going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never stopped. Stacy checks to make sure the kids are okay and tells them that in hearing directly from Julius, they are now all witnesses with a duty to share what they've learned. I'm not supposed to be here. But it looks like something up there, maybe in, in the sky, made it so that I could talk uh, and explain what happened to so many people. I showed Julius photos of some of the many items that he's donated to the permanent collection of the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington. This is they gave me when I, I came in and I asked them to get some kind of uh, identification. I had nothing. And this is your birthday, October 13th, 1919. Yes. You look damn good. Can't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this. This is a very interesting picture. A picture of his liberation from Dachau. There he is, circled. 97 years old, Julius Eisenstein, sadly one of a shrinking number of survivors still here to tell his story. You know, if, if I, when I go, when the other Holocaust people go, we have somebody who is going to be able to take over and make sure that the world does not forget what happened to us. For a normal human being, it's impossible to comprehend it. The cruelty is beyond any explanation what they did. I mean, Julius has shared his story many times, but it's a very, you know, very short portion of his story. I look at Julius and I do wonder, what has Julius seen? We can't know it all, but we can know enough, enough to learn the lesson never again. Julius ends by showing the kids the one outward scar he still bears, the identification tattoo the Nazis carved into the forearms of all their victims. And then a photo, survivor and students.
Our thanks to Julius and Stacy and the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C., which is having a special luncheon next Monday in Boca Raton, where Stacy Nowak is one of the chairs of the event. We have a ton of links of, for information on the event, on the museum, and on the Holocaust. You can find it all on our website, cbsmiami.com.